Hello, how are you doing? And welcome back to the channel. So what selection approach should Warren Gatland take for the match against England in a couple of weeks time? What does he need to do with this team, whether it's sticking with the old guard, which we've seen him do, or just invest in the new players coming through? But does he have time to embed them into the setup? So that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about, the general selection for his starting 15. I will also mention the big story that's been in the news today about the possible strike action by Wales players putting a little bit of uncertainty on that game in Cardiff against England. So I will mention that as well because we definitely can't ignore it. But it's mainly a video about how Warren Gatland goes about progressing this Welsh team on, both in terms of results, but also in terms of freshening up that squad. It is a huge challenge that he faces. So as always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, like the video and drop a comment down below. What would you like to see Warren Gatland do in terms of selection? All right, let's get into it. So I'll start off with that rumoured strike action. I was planning to do a video today just purely about Gatland's selection. And then I saw this news this morning that Wales or Welsh players could go on strike and was debating what to do about it rather than just doing a, a sole video on that strike action because actually I don't think there's too much to be said at the moment. Many of you would have already seen that news. Do go and seek it out if this is new to you but it's basically the suggestion that the players could go on strike ahead of that England game um, because of you know, the issues within the Welsh game, the regions are still in talks with the WRU uh, and the Welsh Players Association, from what I can gather about agreeing budgets for next year. So what it means at the moment is players whose contracts come to the end at, at this season don't currently know if they're going to be offered a new deal for next season. They don't know how much money that would be either. So there's loads of uncertainty and it's a really tough situation for those players whose contracts come to an end. And part of the a uh, solution could be put forward by the Players Association is to go on strike because those talks aren't progressing or because they're not happy with the terms of the deal that is on the table. I saw a, a figure about how the highest earners could go down from potentially earning £400,000 a year down to in the £200,000 a year, which is obviously a massive pay cut as well. So there's all sorts of issues bubbling away. Rather than focusing on that, I just wanted to mention it at the start of the video because for me, rather than getting into the minutiae of that, it's once again reinforces the job Warren Gatland has on his hands as head coach of the national team. Because whilst he obviously isn't involved in those talks directly, it paints a broader picture of the issues in the Welsh game. We've had issues with the regions for a long, long time. We've had obviously issues within the union itself very recently in the news in terms of sexism and the awful stories that have come out there as well. So for me, it was a reminder of just the really tough landscape at the moment for Warren Gatland and the conditions that he's contending with, which I don't think are conducive at this moment in time to his job as the national team head coach. So I think that's just worth bearing in mind when we talk about the Welsh game at the moment. But that's kind of where they are in terms of potential strike action. Certainly a story we'll all keep an eye on. In all honesty, my instinct is... I think that's a great headline, players could go on strike, but how likely is that to actually happen and for that game against England to not go ahead? I would guess, with my limited knowledge of it, that it's very unlikely to happen. You'd kind of be cutting off your nose to spite your face, really, because those games in Cardiff are obviously what fund the game in Wales, so therefore it wouldn't make much sense to strike and not have that game on at all. But look, we'll wait and see. It's a really serious situation that I'm sure will develop. Let's get on to selection, though, because the opening two rounds of the Six Nations, we've seen Warren Gatlin name a side to face Ireland that was almost a bit of a throwback. Justin Tipperick, Alan Wynne-Jones, Lee Halfpenny was set to start before pulling out through injury and Liam Williams coming in. But it was the, the kind of squad that we have seen from Wales for a long, long time, particularly under Gatland in terms of the names. And it was the older players in that squad. But Gatland has also spoken a lot about almost him being behind behind the eight ball and, you know, a bit of criticism to Wayne Pivak and his regime of not bringing enough players through. This squad, he doesn't think, is where it should be in terms of that new talent being blooded in time for this Six Nations and for the World Cup. So how does he balance those two things at the moment? And so in terms of selection, I think it leads to some really interesting discussions. So I'm just going to start in the front row and work my way through the team, really, about what he could do. Do you freshen it up? Or is that not giving those young players enough time to bed in in international rugby? Because youth for youth's sake isn't always the best option. You can't just throw the kids at some of these uh, problems. 
So starting off in the front row, I think props is really interesting for Wales because you've often got this situation where the best scrummaging props, which I would say is Thomas Francis on the tight head um, and Gareth Thomas on the loose head, possibly Win Jones in there as well. Your best scrummaging props aren't necessarily your best rugby players in terms of props around the field. If you want to look at the tight head, you've obviously got Dylan Lewis as well, who's good around the park. I think he's improved his scrummaging. We saw him come through that series in South Africa in the summer, but still is maybe a bit behind Thomas Francis. Leon Brown is another guy who I like the look of, but again, he's had issues with injuries, so whether he's the answer. On the loose head side, I mentioned Wynne Jones. Reese Carre, who is a huge man, adds a lot of power to that front row, but more in terms of his carrying and around the park, not necessarily the best scrummager. So I think what Wales do in terms of that area, I honestly, I'm not sure what the best option is. Welsh fans do let me know in the comments down below because there's different options there, but it's unclear at this moment in time which way Gatlin should go with that. Obviously, Nicky Smith is another one on the loose head to mention who was left out of the squad entirely, but a good scrummager. So that's an area of contention. And when I was looking at those options and jotting them down is... I don't know what the best option is because some of the games we've seen Wales lose, in particular that game against Georgia, they got absolutely demolished at the scrum, particularly in the second half. So do you shore up that scrum, which means you might have a couple of props that aren't as handy around the field? Or do you go for those guys who are better overall players, but what are you losing in your front row? I think that's a, a tough call for Gatlin there. At hooker as well, I mean, it's going to be Ken Owens, isn't it? because he's his captain for this Six Nations. I think if Dowie Lake hadn't dropped out injured, then that might have been quite interesting. So I think he's probably the future at hooker for Wales. He's a really exciting player that I'd like to see more of, but he dropped out injured. So it's Scott Baldwin that's been backing up Ken Owens. Again, that's an area that maybe Gatland's hands are tied a little bit at this moment in time. Second row is another position. I personally would probably go with, say, an Adam Beard and a Daffod Jenkins. I think Beard is... One of the regulars now, isn't he? It's probably him and Will Rowlands when Will Rowlands is fit. But then also with Rowlands heading over to France next year, he might not be available for that longer if Wales don't change their selection policies. Daffod Jenkins, guy from Exeter coming in, young, exciting player. Maybe he's the one you go with going forward rather than an Alan Wynne Jones. There's Reese Davies as well, who made his debut off the bench against Scotland. So that second row, you have options there, but it's kind of depending what you want to go for. Is it Adam Beard and Alan Wynne Jones and you've got the experience there? Do you back someone like a Daffod Jenkins, a Reese Davies, even an Owen Williams on the be bench, the uncapped Cardiff lock as well? Um, you know, are you going for these guys? Are you going for the experience? Or are you going for more youthful options? I'd be tempted by Adam Beard and Daffod Jenkins because I think you have a mix there with Beard, who at this point, a British and Irish line, a much more experienced option. Then in the back row as well, again, it's experience or youth. I think Jack Morgan is part of that future for Wales. So I'd like to see maybe him and Tommy Raphael battling it out for the seven jersey. What does that mean for Justin Tipperick? Uh, Chris Chunza as well, I quite like as a six. I mean, he could be a guy that actually comes in to that second row debate. I think Gatlin is working out what he wants to do with Chunza, whether he sees him as a second row or as a six. But I'll be tempted with either Morgan or Rafael at seven, Chunza at six, and then Falatau probably is still your best option at number eight, isn't he? He was dropped for that Scotland game. You've got Wayne right there as well. So I think a lot of these discussions is, and the reason I'm tempted to opt for more of the youthful options is the Six Nations is Wales aren't going to have a meaningful impact on the tournament. Yes, they want to win games, but are they better off trying to blood players? So at least have some guys that have some tough test match experience when it comes to the World Cup. And even at the World Cup, where we're sat now, Wales aren't going to... It would be amazing if Wales, you know, had a real impact on that World Cup. They are on the better side of the draw, so you never know. They could end up progressing further than their form should necessarily dictate. Um, but I think you have to start looking towards the future. That's kind of why I'm going for some of these options. But again, back row, it's a tough one. Scrum half, I don't, I'm not enamoured by the options there. It's been Thomas Williams. Do you go Kieran Hardy? Reese Webb is back in the squad, but again, isn't a guy for the options. I'll probably be tempted to stick with Thomas Williams, but I don't think anyone's been pulling up trees. And fly half's another one. Now, I think Dan Bigger is still the sort of guy that he hasn't had a couple of great games, but Wales haven't played well generally. So I would stick with Bigger. I think the question at fly half is who's the guy that you are backing to take over from Dan Bigger, maybe after the next World Cup, but certainly in the not too distant future when you want to transition to the next fly half. Is it a Sam Costello, who's not even in the squad at the moment? Um, 
Owen Williams has probably been the form player, hasn't he, amongst the regions in that position, but he's 30, so he's not exactly a really young guy that's going to be taking the shirt over for a long time. So I think it's more about identifying your succession planning for bigger rather than replacing him at this moment in time. In the centres, Joe Hawkins does look to have sort of established himself in the 12 jersey. Nick Tompkins, I don't know what his future holds now. I think he's maybe a good option to have in the squad. Plays week in, week out for Saracens. A really, really good player, but it does look like Hawkins seems to be the favoured one. And then George North, there are starting to be questions for him at outside centre. I would question as well, has George North ever been as good at outside centre as he was on the wing? Which isn't a question I've heard asked all that often, but in my opinion, he was always a better winger. And he seems to have transferred and established himself at an outside centre. And I don't know if he's the right option. Mason Grady, young guy, six foot five, physical. Does he come in at outside centre? I would be tempted with Hawkins and Grady, again, looking towards the future. But those are two guys right at the start of their international careers. Do they have enough experience? That's another balancing act. Just finally with the back three as well, I think Rio Dyer has shown enough to be excited about. Josh Adams is really established there as well. And then when he's back fit, which we're expecting him to be for the England game, I would go with Lewis Reese Samet at fullback and start to transition away from Liam Williams and Lee Halfpenny. And then you've got the likes of a George North or an Alex Cuthbert to come in if you want a bit more size in that back three. So I'd go for Dyer Adams and Reese Samet as my back three. But what do you reckon is best for Gatland to do? Stick with the older guard maybe until the end of the World Cup, or start bringing those young players through. He's spoken about it himself as head coach, that it's a really difficult balance to get. It's not easy at all. And as I said at the start of the video, you can't just chuck young players in for the sake of it. It has to be an environment where they're going to learn and build on those experiences and probably still have experienced guys around them. How they do that is a real challenge. My gut instinct, as I've kind of hinted at in most positions, is start to move towards the younger players, particularly those that stood up well against Scotland, Raphael, uh, Chunza. I have like what I've seen from Jack Morgan at international level so far. So those are my general thoughts. Do subscribe to the channel, like the video. And as I say, particularly Wales fans, drop a comment down below. What do you think Gatlin should do? Who do you want to see starting for Wales in that game against England? All right, I'll see you in the next one.